Hello, this is Amjad al Mandelawi from Baghdad, Iraq. Today, we are going to show two calcified LEDs in two different patients. And the aim is to show how to deal with each one and how to deal with calcification. The first case is an 86-year-old male who is hypertensive, non-smoker, and not diabetic, had atrial fibrillation and angina on exertion. We can see a critical lesion at the mid part of the LED and it's evident the calcification uh, before and after the lesion. The second case is for a 66 year old female who is diabetic and hypertensive non-smoker again with angina on exertion. The lesion may be more long in this case but again the calcification is evident on fluoroscopy. Here we put both the angiogram side by side. They are nearly similar, although maybe different mag magnification, and the calcification is evident. If we see only on a dry fluoroscopy, you see in the first case, calcification are present on both sides of the artery and also in the other one. So this is, these are signs of being moderate to severe calcification. So the question, which one of these cases need plaque modification or let's say need debulk, debulking? The first principle is that you should never do direct stenting in complex cases and in calcified lesion. What we need and what is important, apart from examining the angiography, is intravascular imaging. And the gold standard or the widely available is IVAS. And the IVAS, there are some criteria that tells you which one need debulking or modification. And these are being an arc of calcium more than 360 or 360 degrees, that is a ring calcium, or an arc of calcium 270 degrees with a length more than five millimeter or a calcified nodule. Some authorities will add another point that is a vessel size less than 3.5. OCT has a better resolution and the criteria by OCT is an arc of calcium more than 80, a length more than 5 millimeter, and by OCT you can measure the thickness of the calcium and when it is more than 0.5 millimeter then it's significant and need debulking. So going to the, back to the first case, a man who is 86 with this calcification, we did intravascular imaging. And this is the pullback from distal to mid. We can see two arcs of calcium that coalesce to become more than 270 degrees. And then in the mid part, around 360 degree of calcification. And here we can see a soft plaque, some calcification. This is the proximal to the lesion. And pulling back, the, the artery is disease calcified, but it is it has a large minimal luminal area. Okay, examining the IVAS more thoroughly, we can see at this part, which we said that it is more than 80, actually this one is rather fibrocalcific than calcific. You can see it doesn't cast a lot of shadow. This is the calcium part. So this is a superficial one, which is intimal, it is rather superficial, while the deeper part, the calcium is deep near the adventitia. This is an indication that debulking by rotational atherectomy is not going to be very much useful. And uh, especially that this calcium is only around 90, less than 90 degrees. But at the mid part, we can see near 360 degree of calcification. And this is an indication for debulking. But we have to take another criteria in consideration, and that is the length of this part. Here, if we measure it, it's even less than three millimeter. So being the calcification uh, less than five millimeter in length, and it's not very much circular, apart from only this point, we decided that this patient do not need debulking therapy, and we went for balloon dilatation using NC balloon going to high pressure. You can see the calcium is far away from the balloon. Some indication that it is 
deep rather than superficial. So we dilated the lesion by NC balloon, and you have to take two orthogonal views to make sure that uh, there is a complete dilatation and preparation of the lesion. And then we stented the lesion, and you can see that it is fully dilated. We post dilated, and this is the final result of the first case. For the second case, which is a female, diabetic and hypertensive, Again, we tried to do intravascular ultrasound, but the probe of the ultrasound didn't pass the proximal part, and this by itself was an indication that we need a debulking. What we saw at the end of the probe is a circular calcification. And again, we wanted to palpate the lesion before going to further debulking. We had a balloon, NC balloon, to high pressure 20 atmosphere, and you can see that it is non-dilatable lesion. And we have two, two videos about uh, one non-dilatable artery and the other about uncrossable artery. You can go back to that, to that in our channel. So after that, we went for uh, ro rotational atherectomy using a bare 1.5 several runs. And this is the last run. You can see we could uh, cross the lesion and do some polishing. After that, we managed to do ultrasound, intravascular ultrasound, and you can see there are plaques everywhere in the artery. There is some calcification here, air 180 degrees, and then come more to the mid part. Again, this calcified, and here we can see the 360 degrees with reverberation around. And then the proximal to the lesion, it's all disease and plaque everywhere. We were looking for a landing zone to avoid coming to the osseum of the LID or the left meniscus, which were also disease, but with large minimal luminal area. So this is the, the part that we talk about, 360 degrees of calcification. And here is also important to have the length of this uh, calcification. It was more than five, it was eight, more than eight millimeter. And this was uh, an indication for debulking, which we already did before intravascular ultrasound. So after rotational atherectomy, we went uh, to prepare the region more using a high pressure balloon up to 20 to 22 atmosphere. The region became dilatable this, uh, this time. And then you can see the stent easily inflatable and deployed at the lesion. Then we post dilate it, and this is the final result. So if we see both cases, this is the first case, ma a man uh, with the hypertension, with atrial fibrillation, and this is the result after uh, just a high pressure balloon without debulking. And this is the female that needed rotational atherectomy, and this is the result. So the message from these two cases are that calcification may pose challenges during coronary intervention, and identifying the type and extent of calcification prepares the operator to manage these challenges, and to achieve this, we need meticulous review of the coronary angiogram and to use intravascular imaging. And thank you.